The kids are asleep and the beverages are poured. Welcome to New Dad Gaming, a show about fatherhood, gaming, and new fathers figuring out their gaming lives. My name is Trevor and I have a five-month-old. My name is Gavin. I have a three-month-old. My name is Jeff. I have a Christmas tree and a two-and-a-half and a five-year-old. <laughs> now list, list those in order that you, from your favorite to your least favorite. Uh, uh, no, the Christmas tree is my least favorite. Oh, it's okay. my favorite, <laughs> but with kids, it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, this Christmas tree, you never give me grief. You yeah. go to bed on time. It's, yeah, you can unplug, go to sleep. It's enough out of you. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I gotta say, there's the uh, we've had a trend for the last uh, three days where our son has fallen asleep very quickly. It seems like he's getting into a bit of a flow, like as far as his naps and the scheduling that we've worked on. So it's literally bath gets into his bouncer, like or kind of a chair that bounces a little bit, and like rock him a little bit, and just like out. And it's just like <laughs> there's like that terrifying feeling as soon as that happens. It's just like that this this can't be real. There's is this it? Does this happen? Just like that stunned silence when it first happens, but uh, yeah, still still not sleeping through the night. But that initial sleep, at least, is just that is great. I hope You're that continues. That, like, nobody breathe. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly holding the uh, truly holding the household yeah. hostage. See, I, I always thought of myself like Indiana Jones, where you're like trying to like swipe the sandbag with the jewel, like when you put them down, you're like, yes, and get out of there before making any sudden moves. I yeah. always thought of that. <laughs> yeah, if you have any tips for that, like I, that is where we still lose it. Like I still can't, we can't do the transfers. No. It is like I, I bend down slowly so like I don't trigger her inner ear. And then I hold her at like the base of the neck as I lower. So like I, I have that little nook to slide my hand out. Yeah. Mm. Once her head's on the on the mattress, and um, with our floor, oh, uh, we have a wood floor, so I always wear socks because just the sound of the bare feet like sticking to the floor is enough. Tin foil around here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I my duck feet. So, uh, yeah, I'll like, but we also have like there's a couple um, creaky bits of the floor too that I'm like, I know how to step around now. It's so Indian Jones. <laughs> Yeah, I, think the it, Go ahead. I think it's the heat, though. Like, if you leave them, all of a sudden, like, your heat's gone. Yeah. So I usually, like, keep my arms on him uh, and then slowly remove and then go. But I think it's, like, when you put them down, all of a sudden, like, they're on a cold mattress. Mm -hmm. They're in a cold room. They don't have your body heat. So I found that worked, but every kid's yeah, different. Good luck. The apartment's so bloody hot. Oh. Uh, the entire place is constantly at body temperature, so that helps. In our case, yeah, I could see how that would be an issue if, like, the room you're in is slightly chilly, yeah. and like a sweat lodge. Yeah, I think um, that would be a good one to try. The one we used to do was um, so we had a yoga ball, and one of his surefire ways to get him to sleep was to bounce with him. And one of the ways I used to do it is I used to have a pillow and lay him into the middle of the pillow, and like so, I'm bouncing with him like this. That's, for the audio listeners, that's a great demonstration. Yeah, but I, <laughs> that's a good. But, so you're you know you're holding with two hands, it's on a lap, and he so he's on your lap on a pillow. And then when I stand up, I'm literally just transferring the pillow. So he's like he's barely moving, besides like this very slow, meticulous movement into the bedroom. And then I lay that pillow down on the bed or into his uh, crib, and then like that's when I walk away. That was great. And, like now he's a heifer, so there's no like <laughs> there's no pillows big enough for him to do such a thing. The so I, technique is no longer valid. Yeah, so I gotta. Adapt. <laughs> <laughs> they've adapted. They've they've learned, and evolved. Yeah, I gotta. Uh, so we gotta figure out a new way. But um, no, it was a, it was a couple good uh, days. And that's, his routine at night seems to really be kicking off now. So we're still still doesn't sleep through the night. I think that is still. How the, far does he get? His first his first sleep is good. He sleep his initial sleep. He'll go over for like four hours. Okay. Instead, there's like five. That's so it's, it's a good chunk. But it's after that, it's like every hour or two hours, so it's still disruptive. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, though, like that, it's just such a holy grail, like such a beautiful shining light in the distance, like this thought that <laughs> he'll go to bed at like 8 and like wake up at like 6 or something. Like, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it's, fun, it's funny how like I think, you know, dreams used to be about cars yeah, and yeah. trips and 
fine scotches and whiskeys and now it's just like it's eight hours of continuous sleep for him not even for me that's not even me yet like i'll probably stay up and work yeah. <laughs> for him to go to bed but um yeah yourself gentlemen how did your week go uh do you want to go first jeff uh sure um well if if anyone can't see i did put up christmas so <laughs> the, the holiday itself holiday yeah is in my house yeah um everybody go jeff's yeah, when they get old, when your kids get old enough to talk and kind of understand the world around them, they'll understand that your neighbors put up their Christmas lights, so you should too. So <laughs> Christmas doesn't start when you want; it's when everyone else does it. So. so the key to buying a house is running around neighborhoods during Christmas and find like the <laughs> grinchiest neighborhood you can find. There you go. There you go. It save you some time. But no, it's up. Kids are loving it. They're asking when Santa's gonna get here. So it keeps them entertained and in line. Santa knows what we're doing, so I've already used that. All year now, yeah. realize that it's just a reminder to be good. Exactly. Man, I hated that as a kid. I couldn't I know, stand right? it. Like every every time you turned around, it was you know stop doing that or Santa. Yep. Yeah. So which so it's one of those things like idealistically you're like when I have kids. Yep. I'm not gonna say that. I know. I said the same thing. the same thing. But really, it like snaps in their mind. They're just like, okay, I won't do anything. I'll be good. So I have used it, I will say. It's like a behavior totem. <laughs> yeah. It's like there to remind you. Yeah, it's just like, overseeing. Don't mess up. No. So anyway, yeah, Christmas, Christmas is up. Uh, Gaming-wise, uh, we had like a, like a dad night, so we did some gaming there. Some Rocket League. Uh, the Jack Party Pack thing was mm -hmm. awesome on PS4. It's kind of got like some this little games, like a, like a draw something kind of idea where you're supposed to kind of guess what everyone's drawing and caption it. So it was really fun, fun to get out, fun to try a game that yeah. wasn't. Sorry, like... hold on that for a second. Is, it, is this not just like you don't know Jack, or did they expand that game now? They expanded it, so it has a bunch of other games. Um, it does still have you don't know Jack, so it's like trivia stuff. Uh, it has that option, and you kind of play against each other, but it also has, like, three or four other games where there's, like, a word game, there's, like, a draw-something kind of uh, game, and you everybody uses their cell phones, so you can play with up to, like, 100 people or something. It's crazy. Um, but you don't use the PS4 controller. You use your cell phone, and then everybody kind of logs in. Yeah, the um, same with uh, Just Dance did that now, where instead of using, like, a peripheral, it just uses the accelerometer on a phone. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm liking that sort of pairing now that some games are doing where it's like they know that there's already a user base who yeah. has these peripherals. So instead of making somebody buy another piece of plastic, like like a jack buzzer or something like that. <laughs> like well, even if it was another controller, that's like 60, 70 bucks, yeah. right? So they're, they're like almost the price of a phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that that's that's a really fun game. I think it was free on PS Plus, or it was really cheap, like three bucks or something. And it was it's a ton of fun. Again, it's like Rocket League kind of material. It's very easy to get into. Has some laughs and some drinks. And no, that's actually a really good recommendation because I've been looking to get something that would be like party friendly. Yeah, um, it's a good party game. Like in a couple of years when we can have parties again. <laughs> Yeah, Light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> buy it for five years from now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now that would man, that sounds ideal because the like Jack in the Box. It's or is it Jack in the Box? It's Jack. You don't know Jack. Sorry. You, yeah. So you don't know Jack alone was always kind of a fun game, but like you're referring to there, Trevor's a little older. Yeah. <laughs> what should I say? Now? Is, that, is that Jack's like pickup sticks or? Uh... <laughs> is that what has, is that the one with a hoop and you have a stick and you run yeah, down the street real fast? <laughs> Yeah, see, we'll play some hoop. Take a hoop and a stick. <laughs> you see, you got this cup and you attach it to a ball and you're just throwing up inside. Ha ha. Best <laughs> accent ever. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Travel, time to come home. Chip beef is ready. <laughs> Jeez. Don't quit our day jobs. But the, <laughs> you don't know Jack was always awesome. Like that was, as far as like a party game, the thought that they've expanded it and now the, the uh, smartphone, like I actually hope they have it for the uh, 360 I think or they PC. I think they do, yeah, they definitely do for Steam. PC. Yeah, I've seen it on Steam. And they uh, they update it too. Like so, they had jokes about like uh, Frozen. Let's say just because I'm in the kid world. So oh, Frozen. Say refugees and all. No, 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 nothing but <laughs> theory. But um, 
but it's pretty up to date, and they have a crazy amount of questions, like um, like thousands of them. So it doesn't really get boring. Like you can't really repeat them. Um, I think but, yeah, it's awesome too now with like the how games can be updated remotely by the developers. Is that yeah. games like Jack um, can have new life breathed into them uh, without it being a brand new release? Um, and I think. And that's also a good opportunity for them as well for microtransactions, like little... Uh, Shh, don't say that. Packs. <laughs> don't tell them that. <laughs> but if you think of it like um, like a, like an actual board game or a card game like Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the content, like it's essentially... It's for itself, right? It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's real-life DLC. Yeah, you know, yeah. You have the base game, but you're going to go buy things that add to it and appendix it and grow it to a larger experience. Yeah, that's something I would support, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's kind of like a game as a platform, too, because, I mean, that, um, that was, I can remember playing some versions of that in the high school, in, like, early high school. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. Is, that's been around, like, that platform, that game... Uh, it was on a hiatus for a bit, I think, and then it's been yeah. the last couple of years, I think, they finally, like, let's bring it back. Remember Pogs? <laughs> <laughs> Hacky sacks. See, here, get back in the 60s. Like the, a thought I always had with games, and it, it's interesting. A game like that would be able to do it, like have such longevity. Um, premise is simple, fun for everybody, like easy to pull out for gamers and non-gamers alike. Like I've always wondered yeah. about a game itself that would just always live on in perpetuity. And in some ways, I, I think like well, things like I, World of Warcraft have done it. Yeah. And it's like, I think that's like that thing is like what ten years or more. Yeah. It's an old one. And, and the thought that if you were playing it, it's evolved. Um, it's your same character, like you're still doing your adventure, but it's just the world is constantly going. And I've always thought, like, I think I thought of that as getting to the end of some Final Fantasies. It's like, wouldn't it be great if, like, once or twice a year they just released another disc and you just get to take your guy and you just, now you, whatever, however you've built up your character, you now get to take him on the next adventure and then well, the I next think adventure. That with, with Mass Effect in a way. Yeah, because with Mass Effect, you could take your Commander Shepard and bring them on to the next one and on to the next one. Um, and I thought that was a fairly successful um, experiment because I really enjoyed that aspect of Mass Effect. That was one of my favorite parts was taking my Commander Shepard and seeing them through a trilogy and all of the decisions that I've made, even in the first game, uh, showing up again in one way or another in the third game. And I, I always really enjoyed that aspect of it. It gave me a far greater attachment to the narrative and to my character and the storytelling. So I think, like, whether it be a narrative-heavy game like with Mass Effect or something more trivia-based like with Jack, um, I think adding to the experience and kind of letting it grow and get meatier is 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 a very good thing. And I think as far as in regards to longevity, like, how how long has Alex Trebek had a job? Like, when you look at the simplicity of something like a trivia game, it has legs. It'll last for a long time because, you know, how many times have you sat at a pub and there's been that, like, crinkled, dog-eared little dish full of the mine trivia thing? You know, like, card, you, at most pubs, there's always, like, a little, little dish of trivia cards kicking around for people to just kill time while they're waiting for their wings to show up so they can smear wing sauce on the cards and put them back and then somebody else touches them. <laughs> Sounds great. But yeah, there's always like that mind trap trivia thing kicking around a bar and they have trivia nights at bars. It's like that idea of testing one's useless knowledge has been such a huge component to just playfulness. Um, whether it be board games or video games or game shows. Um, you know, I, I think that formula we'll see forever. It's just going to change formats here or there and how, whatnot, you know. It's kind of an interesting one from a father perspective because the, I can remember playing uh, Trivial Pursuit with my family, especially when I was younger. And it was just, it was basically a game of me, everyone's playing, everyone else is doing fine. And they roll around. It's like, all right, time, Trevor, time for your question. And it's, my dad pulls up a card. Nope. And he pulls up another card. No, you're not going to know that. Another card. Nope. <laughs> No, you're not gonna know that. <laughs> just like, and not as not as a measure of my intelligence, but as a measure of that, like as a however old I was at the time, like definitely like relatively young. Let's say like ten. It's like that game was not suited for me, but that's kind of like the game that they had. Yeah. And especially t at the time, they also had like uh, Trivial Pursuit for kids. But we ended up playing that. But whoever went first would win. 
because every question was so obvious. <laughs> it's like when water freezes, it becomes. Oh, you won't get it. Won't get it. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. So trivia games, it, it, definitely with adults, it's kind of a it's a weird nexus with uh, kids, like adults playing with kids because. And they obviously can't be the same card. So unless like you have some sort of, unless I've never seen a game that does this, but if it's like, if you're an adult, you pull from this box of questions. If you're a kid, you pull from this box of questions. Otherwise you have like, as the moderator or the person asking, you're doing the censorship where it's like, well, I don't think you're going to know very much world war one trivia. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's move on. Yeah, actually, if anything, that's, that's a really good idea is like you buy the kids, Trivial Pursuit set, and you just have that box on hand. And then when it's their turn, they, they draw one of those cards. And then, like, the rest of the adults can draw, you know, from from the regular box, except for that one uncle. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, they kind of did that with, with, with Cards Against Humanity, right? Yeah. You have yeah. the original box, then you have the dirtier, bigger one. <laughs> no, no, you say, you say the name, Jeff. You say the full yeah. name. Uh, bigger, blacker. Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what a racist. I know. I know. Yes. But no, yeah, that's a good idea. That's why, that's why you're looking around your house now, in case your wife heard you. <laughs> or kids, I suppose. Or a black neighbor in earshot. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No. Uh, the one game that I found that was hard to uh, be for like both kids and and grown ups. I always found it was like Monopoly. Like trying to get a kid to play Monopoly is just like trying to get a kid to do your taxes. It's just not gonna happen. No. You know, very little like they want to play with the race car. Like they don't want to and they want to pretend with the money. Like Monopoly sets in a kid's house, it always just turns into play money that can be used during like like a tea party or like a G.I. Joe hostage negotiation. Like, it's never, <laughs> like, yeah, it's never really used for its intended purposes, which is, like, to, you know, buy the the the, the lighting company, you know? Yeah. yeah, I think it's also a matter of longevity, too. Like, the, yeah. I think enough kids will have a little bit of um, energy and commitment to it at the beginning, but you give that, like, another hour, and it's just, yeah. like... <laughs> you're sitting there trying to you're sitting there trying to hustle, you know, boardwalk, and meanwhile, kid is just like done with it. And he's like, "I'm finished. I don't want to play this anymore." Yeah. It's like, no, no, daddy's not done winning. <laughs> daddy always wins. Something like risk or whatnot. It's like that um, the tolerance level, and like even with some adults, like I know some adults who are like, "I just can't do this game. It's way too much. It's too involved." Yeah. Um, and even I find like there's certain games I really like. And there's other games where I'm just like, that's so much. I just, you know, I don't want to. I'll just play that's ball a... Like, <laughs> I just. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's dangerous, too, because if you do like the game, and if it's like games night and you got like three people who are into it and one person who isn't, and just like to deal with the person who's not really trying or is just like mucking yeah. about, it's like, oh, I don't want to. Just, just sacrifice your pieces to me already. <laughs> just move on. <laughs> That's when, like, the people who are enjoying it just agree to invade Australia and just wipe the person out. <laughs> Move on with the money. That was a safe tactic. Yeah. So, Gavin, you mentioned Fallout. I don't suppose you <laughs> No, he didn't, it. did he? That should be the word of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fallout! I would Confetti. lose it if, like, your couch behind you, Jeff, started going like, Yay! <laughs> A Christmas oh, trees, a no. Christmas Christmas lights at least flickering. Well, yeah, right. you know, I'm just thinking like Pee Wee Herman because right now yeah. your couch does sort of have that big comfy chair resemblance. It's got a mouth, it's got the two pillows, it's like eyes. I'm putting eyes on it tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> For next you know, got a week <laughs> yeah. to hold out. Done. Okay. So when we um, when we last left our characters, we had uh, Trevor's wonderful saint roaming around the wasteland. Great, the What's that? My family's great, by the way. Oh, are they? Oh, neat. <laughs> That's fine. But get back to Fallout. <laughs> They're in Fallout. You... That's your real family. Are you murdering people in Fallout still, Gavin? Let's talk about the important issues. Sorry to jump ahead. Gavin, do tell me how are things with your daughter. Ah, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not playing Fallout, let me tell you that. <laughs> uh, things are going really well. She's starting to find her voice, um, which is absolutely adorable. 
and uh, starting to giggle. It's like this weird sort of breathy thing. Uh, she's just kind of like these squeaky sighs and stuff. But uh, yeah, no, it's she's starting to be a little bit more verbal and trying to like just making cooing noises and like this silly baby cuteness that's very typical of babies. Babies. <sighs> but uh, no, she's she's good. She's doing well. Um, she's not giving us too much guff, which is which is great. Um, you know, fingers crossed. You know. Uh, Eighteen more years of that, and, yeah. Um, but no, it's 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 been good, and uh, wife's doing well. And we've been just kind of doing our family thing. We get to visit a bunch of family uh, soon, which is going to be nice. A uh, nice little road trip, all that, all that fun stuff. Have and, your um, uh, have your family, and actually, even just for you, Jeff. I mean, the actually, I think I'll leave this one for next week. But um, I'm going to ask you guys about well, because it, it's big, because it's just like Christmas and the babies. And oh, yeah. right now, like Gavin, like you and I, like, our kids are in weird spots because they they don't can't really want anything at this point. So really, it's going to be like I'm being asked, like, what does he want? And it's like, yeah. I don't know, scotch. Like, <laughs> just, yeah. like he wants dad. Yeah, he wants they want card. daddy and mommy to be happy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you know, but uh, we'll, we'll say that for next week because I think it's actually yeah. pretty interesting, like how to deal with that whole thing. But the what I'm expecting one week is for you, Gavin, to come in and tell me that it's like, oh yeah, she starts sleeping through the night. Um, is mm-hmm. really easy, getting a lot of rest, and, and like I'll be the one sole guy <laughs> with a baby. It feels like I'm gonna be the only guy with a baby that doesn't sleep through the night. Basically, uh, Trevor, um, I haven't been talking about her sleep patterns because I just don't say I... it. Don't say it. Shut up. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it. So follow. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh. <laughs> um, uh, why? So tired. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> uh, good for you though. That's awesome. Good for you. I hate you. <laughs> yeah, good for you. You've been like, through gritted teeth. <laughs> no, no. Like we still have rough patches here and there, but she's she's pretty good. Oh, that's awesome. No, nah, I wouldn't. Okay. I, I assure you, I would not wish this on anybody. So, uh, <laughs> cheers to you, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, um, so yeah. And then, yeah, obviously, follow. So, when we last left our characters, we had my saintly, wonderful person roaming through, trying to help everyone and build, craft things for old ladies and save cats out of trees. Uh, Gavin was murdering and marauding the land and Not building, building houses and accommodations for dogs and leaving humans oh. to ruin. And this is where we pick up our story. Gavin, how's your murderer this week? <laughs> one. I only have one murder. One body count. How that happened. Two. Always self defense. I let the raider shoot first. I give them an opportunity to walk the other way. Um, also, sanctuary is thriving. Um, I got really good defense set up. Everybody's happy. I didn't give drugs to the old lady, so she doesn't need a chair. I actually gave her a job farming so she can better herself. <laughs> yeah. oh, my how the tables have turned yeah um i made it to diamond city um i found a former alcoholic there i gave him some nuka cola and then sent him back to sanctuary and gave him a job as well so i'm employing other neighborhoods like did you just did you do this to spite me like yeah, I just, just like got it there i like the guy <laughs> did. he was like thanks for the cola <laughs> i go i'll show him i'm gonna be the best wasteland's ever seen <laughs> i actually um, did a mission where i had to get more green paint for fenway them to paint the wall. Oh, uh, get out! Really? That's yeah. awesome. It was just I saw a guy off in the corner just painting the wall. I'm like, hey, how you doing? He's like, I need more paint. I'm like, okay, I, I can help you. It's like, good. The hardware store's down that way. All right. I had to shoot a couple of raiders, got them some, and then I had to mix paint. I had to collect oh, yellow my. and blue paint and put them in a it's paint a... mixer, and then take the paint back. Paint down. simulator. Yep. You know what I thought for your character? You'd be like, you want this fence red? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like it needs more red. <laughs> Here. There you go. Take yeah. that. Hold this baseball. Um, oh, this looks like a grenade, sir. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, there's, there's baseball grenades. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Um, yeah, they're amazing. Um, oh, and I, I've come across uh, my first super mutants. They're awesome. Really fun to fight because they're huge and they sound menacing. And uh, also a few synths, which is cool. Oh, um, I did end up having to kill an entire town. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we are. That's better. But one death. We're, we're, we're back. That sounds, that sounds a little bit more familiar. See, the town was doing something kind of, 
uh, I would say morally questionable. I didn't like it. They didn't like that I didn't like it. Um, some words were exchanged, and then bullets were exchanged, and then everybody else is dead. <laughs> so I don't go back to that town because now it's just nothing but unmanned turrets. <laughs> Which was too bad because they had good stuff. I like trading there. But then I found another town that doesn't do bad things that makes me have to kill them. To... I saved somebody, though, so that's the thing. I saved one person and murdered a town to do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Greater good. I can, I can only do this good deed as long as it's greatly overweighed <laughs> by a bunch of bad deeds. Well, you know, I asked nicely, and they said no, so then I asked not so nice. I'll say, I'll say it was some of the murder stuff. The um, <laughs> murder <laughs> stuff. Some of the, speaking of murdering, what, was I was in this. Uh, okay, the murder doesn't have to do with this part. But I went to a school, and uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> underneath of the school was a vault, like a different vault. You found a vault. I've been looking for a vault. Yeah, I just came across it. And but the thing is about it though, it was weird for me. Is like I walked in. And there were people, so not even, not ghouls, not anybody who's mutated, just humans. And not even raiders, either. Mm -hmm. So I put away my gun, and I I, I had a 90%, I was so certain that they were just going to start killing me. But I just had to know, because it's like, you can't just go around murdering other humans in this, like, <laughs> like there's very few of us left, and you need these folks, and they're in a vault, even, so they likely survive something, so put the gun away and I slowly started to walk away and um, walk towards them and immediately they just start open fire just like <laughs> lit up the entire place I'm like well this is happening now so I killed like 40 of them <laughs> like this murdered like 40 surviving humans and it's just like I, th I thought that was a pretty like black and white thing it's either like you are a settler willing to farm or you are a gun toting murderer like there's just no div I could imagine like some hostility as far as like who are you get out of here Mm -hmm. It was like just literally right to firing, like right I, to the I had death that squad. With one group called the Gunners. Um, yeah, sorry, it was it was Gunners. That's a red oh, flag. That, oh yeah, Gunners. Don't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like you know, point of order. Uh... <laughs> you guys are too involved. Red flag, Gunners. Yeah. Gunners. Yeah, no, with the Gunners, they like I've approached one of their bases. They saw me. They kind of raised their guns, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna walk away, and then they put their guns down. So like, there is that sort of like, you know, this is private, no trespassing. And you're like, okay, bye. And you're like, okay, fine, bye. And I think that's what, like, with that one town, like, I don't want to give spoilers away about side mission, but I haven't named it, so it's fine. Um, they're, like, they're holding somebody captive. And I went to the place that they're holding them, and I was like, hey, um, you need to release this person. And they're like, um, no. I'm like, no, you really should release them. And they're like, no, we won't. This isn't personal. And then they shot at me. So it was like, I'm asking you nicely to not keep this person held against their will. Can you not do it? And they're like, no. Our answer is bullets. And then you end up having to contend with that. So. You, chose, you chose the wrong Gavin to mess with, pal. I know. <laughs> hey, nobody messes with Rosie. <laughs> oh, yeah, so it's the lady. You chose the wrong lady to mess with, pal. Yep. Oh, and baseball Betsy. grenades! Baseball grenades for everybody! <laughs> my, my gun, Betsy, is the greatest gun ever. <laughs> so awesome. Betsy's the best. Um, it's a 10 mil handgun, and I just, like, it has a silencer and, like, a reflex sight and all these custom grips and just the thing's super deadly and quiet, whisper quiet. So, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Oh, and ghouls. Shoot them in the knees. No, oh, there you go. Inside tip. Yep. Is there the... <laughs> Pro tip. Pro tip. Pro oh, dad like. gaming tip. The... To be, sorry, to be fair, like, they're super fat. Some of them are really fast, right? Like, that's not just the glitch I have. The ghouls? Yeah. Yeah, no, they bull rush you. And they, they kind of, like, will jump and swat, and they fall down when they do it. But, yeah, they're, they're really quick. Because they came out with such a speed, I thought, like, my game, like, the PC had stuttered and like it was just catching up to, and they were like running at me too fast. Yeah, it's no, terrifying. He's no. like, God, <laughs> what is this? Yeah, <laughs> that's why you got to use vats on those guys. And uh, if you get them in the legs, you can actually take a leg off, but they're still alive. But they're on like the ground crawling at you, and it slows them down. <laughs> nice. It's terrifying though. They're very well done as far as being scary. Like they're a lot scarier than the previous installments. Um, and they look more like that dude from RoboCop who got all the toxic waste on and kind of half melted. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how they look more like that than just like mummies. Um, it's far more ghoulish and less zombie. Um, but yeah, no, it's been fun. I've been encountering some interesting critters. Uh, got attacked by a glowing ghoul. They're always fun. Oh. Yeah. And a few legendary... Oh, legendary Deathclaw tried to kill me. That was pretty wicked. Jeez. I got a cool piece of armor from him. That was pretty nice. Oh, you beat him, too. Yeah. I thought you were going to explain your harrowing us. escape, but uh, that's not how... You murdered him. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how Gavinette plays this game. No. Nope. Nope. Shot him till he was dead. A lot of cat and mouse, though. I had to hide a few times. The um, funny thing that I ended up doing was the... Like, I've actually lessened my armor... So that I didn't look so awful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got this one. I got this great piece of armor, except it was like full body, including like like a, and not the power armor, but just like some sort of helmet, the whole nine. It just and it's just you're talking to people, and it's like I'd be happy to pick those tomatoes for you. And meanwhile, I'm just in this awful, yeah. like like scary rusted out metal thing. It's just like this is this feels awful. Like I don't like looking at myself in cutscenes. Yeah, which I'm seeing I actually types. adjusted a few things. And what's funny is that in previous Fallout games, you never saw yourself in conversation cutscenes. Um, it was always just done first person or third person if you vouch that way. But uh, yeah, I, I, actually, I really do like the cutscene and the conversation animations. So I, 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 myself as well, there's been times where I've had armor where the stats have been really nice. And I put it on and even Lindsay's like, no, nah, it doesn't look good. You know, like she'll interject and she's like, You're that, that's tacky, don't wear that. I'm like, but it gives me like ten damage resistance and this and that. She's like, Yeah, but it looks horrible. Put the green shirt back on. Like, okay. There's also like and there's also just like the like I, I like playing with a little bit of ridiculousness, like where yeah. I picked up a boulder cap. Oh and the that's, boulder cap's great. That's pretty funny. But there's then there's a pomp like whisk or um sorry, a wig. It's yep, a bit yep. like a white big pomp pompous like wig and it's just like that's that's a little too far. It's I like a chef's hat. <laughs> Even better. Oh, that's amazing. Then you can go up and say stuff like, "What's on the menu?" You. <laughs> Bam. He's like, oh. Man, if like your puns were based on whatever you dad were wearing. Hey, dad oh. Yeah. Like I found a po There's I had a whole like postman uniform, including like the oh, hat. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I found a dead postal worker at a gas station. I'm like, hey, that's cool, but I don't want to wear that. I'll say it's like there's something like there's some pretty. It's, Interesting gravitas to the dead people in the world. Yeah, like, like I found one guy burnt under a tree, and he had a note. And there's there's a whole scene like that. He was yeah. definitely living there for a bit. And there's something about finding stumbling across that. Um, and it's not connected. It's not like we need to build out this mission, so we got to yeah. build this out. It's just that that is totally a random person in the woods just a died because of the telling. nuclear. Yeah, yeah. it's and it's strange how kind of powerful it is in some ways like there's some folks just like clasping onto something that you can take or mm -hmm. there's one where like there's um geez i was walking through something and there's just like a good 12 huddled around like they'd all died in the same way like or, yeah. or in the same incident and it's just like it yeah it punches home which is which is kind of fun. in a game where like you'll kill like 20 raiders and it's like well, you know whatever those those are just bodies for finding new armor yeah. and then you go into the, and you find these other ones where all the, interestingly because of the because it's not active like you weren't a part of it it's just quietly telling a story and, and telling a story that it's not screaming at you like you have to deduce i don't have anything to do with this and it has nothing to do with what i am doing next yeah like there's, there's something almost about that passiveness to that just bloodshed like, why and that... Is this here i found um like a stonehenge remade with old cars that's creepy. <laughs> it was just there. Like, it wasn't part of a mission. There wasn't anything really special there. I found, like, a couple of med kits. That was it. Like, some stim packs, and, you know, that was all. It was just there. But it looks so cool, and you're just like, that's such a neat story. But, like, there's no reason for it to be here. There's no narrative connecting it, nothing. It's just Stonehenge, just Carhenge, just kicking around. And uh, I love those little moments where you're just walking around the environment, and you see, like... Especially with like finding the old skeletons and like why is it here? Why is it holding this? Um, or like just finding different little ruins that tell you know micro tales of, of the people who were there before you. And I think that's that's the fun part of the environment. I think that's what makes people run around looking at various shiny things 
like a cat with a laser pointer just not paying attention to what they're doing just like what's that what's that <laughs> so. Nice. yeah so the now so it's been like man it just continues to be interesting i think i still have some still some sad bits where just like i really wish i had more time to play this but yeah. it feels like you know it's, it's going to be a slow burn i'm going to be able to play this one for quite some time yeah um i'll be curious if i can beat it before the first dlc comes out oh uh, god no, i'm gonna wait for all of, i'm gonna just let the dlcs pile up and i'll i'll get it later <laughs> pick them up in a pack it's almost like in some ways i think at that point i want to get back to other games yeah. like we we had discussed during the week that i should maybe dip into spec ops the line because that's such a incredible oh, yeah. gaming experience and i'd like to i'd like to i have uh i want to play some battlefront i want to get back to some, some rocket league like i've really been this is the point where i was playing this game and it's just i was now getting with such limited gaming time that i have as a dad it was like i want this one demands a lot of time it needs a lot of time to yeah. like, bring out the value there's a long way for me to go before i possibly see the end of it but now it's playing this one to the detriment of every other game that I have or I had been playing and to the point I'm, I'm not, guilt's not the right way I think that's not a thing to be guilty about but you're playing you're like you have reservations about starting this one up again because mm -hmm. there's other things to experience like this isn't the only thing to be playing but it kind of needs at the time and especially a game that's a little bit high maintenance too like you could almost dump an entire play session into inventory management hmm. and yeah. like which which I, I hate honestly like I can't yeah. stand being too but heavy it's, to it's walk like, it's so annoying <sighs> Yeah. So I think that's that's a difficult aspect of that game as well, is when you have very limited time and you end up spending all that time planting melons and uh, clearing out your inventory so you can carry more than five pounds of bonus stuff. Um, I think that, that can be tough. Where you're like, oh, I, I'm going to get an hour in, it'll be great. And then sometimes I'll play it for like a half hour and I'll explore like three different awesome locations. And other times I'll play it for like an hour and all I did was clear all the unnecessary stuff out of my inventory and fix up my house. Um, so it's a really weird game in that sense. And I do want to try to balance it with other games because uh, like Just Cause 3 is coming out. I'm very excited for that. Uh, thankfully it's so different. <laughs> that I think the two of them playing in conjunction will balance each other out. I'm curious as to how it'll affect my judgment of the pacing for Fallout and whether, like, you know, it's like watching a... It's like trying to watch Law and & Order and, like, The Expendables at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a very apt description, I think. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like one's, like, really high quality good storytelling and the other one's just like stupid fun yeah but it's like okay well is commando gonna ruin my palette for for watching er um because it's just so it's it's, it's catering to that part of my brain that's really hungry for that and I, I, yeah i'm not sure if anything maybe the two will help keep the appetite for the other um fresh like i'll play a bit of the one and be like okay i need to slow it down a bit, get some followed in there and then play follow it. It's like, okay, I just need to I need to base jump and then surf on an airplane. Alright, I'll do this. <laughs> well, and clean. that's that's probably the good part too, right? You have follow yeah. that's so like in depth, lore heavy, and then you have just cause, which is like base yeah. let's hang glide and shoot a rocket, right? So you don't have to remember both stories. Yeah. You can kinda of jump yeah. in and jump out. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't think I could handle something like uh Dragon Age Inquisition no. okay. or The Witcher alongside Fallout. Like yeah. you have to kind of you can really only take on a meal of that size one at a time. Happy Thanksgiving. So the just to uh the switch gears a little bit before <laughs> we wrap up, I won't spend too much long on this, but we do have uh, Black Friday coming up, which previously not much of a thing in Canada, but recent years it's certainly blown up that way kind of interesting now because the thought of going to stores seems so archaic because the exact same deals are just online yeah. except for three door busters which a will probably get you killed and b <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait all night for and likely not get it anyways but um, yeah so are there any like kid items or games that you guys are looking for like with black friday like anything you have your eyes open for 
Uh, I'm keeping an eye out for like a high chair that can um, like a multi-stage thing that we can strap to a chair because she's going to be at that stage in the next few weeks where we can start doing like rice cereal and stuff like that. Um, it's about it for her because it's also so close to the holidays and as we'll probably touch on next week there's a lot of family members asking well what can we get her what can we get her so I think that's the one Black Friday item that we might look for just because we might want it before the holidays um, and but like before Christmas actually hits uh, as far as myself and for gaming and gadgets and stuff I might look into maybe a new cell phone if there's any decent deals uh, my contract's up so I'm up for renegotiating some stuff um, I think that's about it, really. Like, I'm, my gaming itch is thoroughly scratched with those two games. So, uh, any other sort of items, like, I'm happy to ask for. Like, I might try to get a few items that I want to get for, as gifts for other people. Uh, I might try to take advantage of some sales that way. But uh, for the most part, like, you know, usually my wife and I will grab, like, a couple years ago, we grabbed a new tablet. Um, but we literally walked in to a Best Buy, which was practically a ghost town, hmm. on like the Friday. We just walked in and we're like, yeah, we want that one. And we just grabbed it. I'm like, thanks. Here's some money. See you later. And that was it. Like, there was no like crazy mobs or people thrashing around. It was very civilized. It was just like any other transaction, except we didn't have to give them as much money. And uh, that kind of made me not really... It, downplayed the Black Friday thing in the sense of it's not that big of a deal. It's just a sale. And if you find something cool for a good price, yeah, go for it. If you don't, it's no biggie. At the end of the day, it's just a sale. It's just <laughs> stuff. Like, we don't need to trample people in a stampede of greed. Uh, just relax, pump your brakes, and try again on Boxing Week because guess what? Like in a few weeks, there's going to be another sale, and it's probably going to be the exact same discount, if not better. Probably better. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, yourself? Um, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, I've kind of got, like the kids have asked for a lot of Paw Patrol specific items, which again... <laughs> Chase is on the case. Oh, Chase yeah. Chase is on the case. For those that don't know, it's a show about dogs. <laughs> which, okay, to circle around, see, this one, is that's on theme. Everything they do... Like yes. They're dogs, yes. and it's like, pass me that dog biscuit. Like, right. There's a dog bowl. Yes, it's like, not a bubble guppy. Their their cars transform out of their dog houses. Like right. that's... I saw a bubble guppy greeting card the other day at the shop, and I was like appalled by it. Like I just looked at him, like, oh, this is like. Were they traveling on an airplane or something? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget what she was doing, but also I don't like their wardrobe. How they're just wearing like, like basically starfish. Oh really? Wow! I don't know. Is it... They got starfish bikinis too. I think pornographic yeah. bubble guppies. It was just it just gave me a weird feeling. I didn't like it. I'm surprised so... they're that on theme. That stupid show. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Maybe it, a different, maybe it was like a mermaid thing. I don't know. Weird. It yeah, was... at least like man, Paw Patrol is on point. Like it's yeah. got. <laughs> yeah, they it's, are it's they are like committed this. to being dogs. It's great. <laughs> Everything canine. Um, yes. And, but with Black Friday, just kind of considering inventory, it's yeah. like the hot toy this year. So we decided just to pay the extra 10 20 bucks to get it earlier yeah. versus, again, going into the stampede, trying to get it. And then what do you do with the kids at that point, right? So now we have families. We can't really do that anymore and rush the front door and yeah. get in there and get out. Um, but some other things like Legos on sale, we might look at that. Um, but just little items like stocking stuffers and stuff. So I'm not. I don't think I'll travel to a store again. Like Trevor mentioned, a lot of the digital sales are as good as the physical ones. Or you just order it online and wait for it. Uh, I don't have any like uh, like immediate need to go get something. I am looking to get Witcher Three if that bounces down in price and probably tear away. Yeah. Tear away. Also, um, Witcher Three did one. drop. I think it dropped near to fifty. Yeah. Last week I saw one deal. Oh, yeah. There's, Might uh, have been GOG, Good Old Games. Uh, okay. That. There's also this new one that just came out um, called uh, Fall, 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 Fallout, Fallout. That's it. Uh, you can always look into that, too. It might be on sale. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> we're so. I'm just gonna keep trying to sell you on it. Yeah, uh, right, right. No, that's actually uh, Witcher Three. I've heard amazing things. My one friend can't get enough of it, and it's just stunning. Like the art direction in it is so yeah. nice. It's just yeah. Beautiful. Well, even just playing the first one, uh, yeah. I'm Which still playing like, the first one. Still, like it's one of those. Um, it was like the new crisis for a while in regards to like benchmarking a PC. Yeah. It's like yeah, but can it run Witcher? Right. Like that was the meme for a bit. Yeah. Um, Man, you want to see a benchmark? Uh, do a quick Google search after this for Battlefront realistic mod. Somebody oh, released. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, it's yeah, but the white balance is all off on it. It like, is. I understand it's nice and realistic, and the textures are really nice. But like, when the sun is cresting over a hill, it's not like twenty five percent gray. Like, it should be pure white. It's a light source, and not just any light source. It's a sun. Well, let's get your programmer buddy to hop in and uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> clean clean that bit up. And they, but it's still it's it does look man. Good. That's that's what games are going to be, where it's just that realistic. Because the having played it too, like some of the movement and some of the way the dust settles when you fire, like rock slide yeah. things like that. Like it is that's unbelievable. Dice like that. has always been fantastic for like um, like effects, like particle effects, ambient effects, like those sort of things, and like sound. I remember yeah. that playing an older Battlefield game and it was the first time I experienced a grenade going off. I think it was like the first bad company. And like a grenade went off really close to me and I could hear my ears reeking. Yeah. I was like, whoa. That's Even insane. their engine, right? Like the Frostbite engine? It's yeah. insane. Like I remember playing my first Battlefront, or not like the first one, but um, getting into a deathmatch, hiding in a house, and I have a tank blow a hole through the house wall. And I'm just sitting there <laughs> That might have been me. It's amazing that way. I remember... But yeah, that's I mean, great too because you wouldn't expect it because they're like, no, well, no, clearly you can't destroy a wall. So <laughs> <it's> like... <laughs> anything. One of, one of my favorite battlefield moments was a tank was driving at me, and I'm like, I'm doomed, I'm doomed. But I realized I had a rocket launcher. But I'm like, I don't have enough ammo because it takes a couple hits to take the tank out. But it was on a bridge, so I shot the bridge underneath it, and it fell through the hole. Yeah. And then it got stuck. But the guy inside was still alive, so he got out of the tank. When he got out of the tank, then I shot him. <laughs> like, yes! It's like, I got your tank stuck in a hole, and yeah. you got out to try to run away. I got you. <laughs> you tried to kill me with a tank. Like, those moments are so... And I think the mean. chaos of it, and just the environment... It, it, but then there's also wacky moments, too. Like, one time I was huddled in cover, and I wanted to cross the street to get to another building because there was a sniper pinning me down. And um, I'm like, okay, I'm going to cross the street. And I just come out from cover, and I go to cross the street, and a jet is just, like, scraping across the road, like, down the road, like, it's just driving. <laughs> but it was, like, engulfed in flames. Like, it was just this husk of a crashed jet just going just slowly down the road like a taxi cab. And I'm like, okay. So I just went back into cover to wait for all the chaos to go by, and then I went a second time. But just these moments of, like... My friend and I were pinned down by a, an attack helicopter. I'm saying this like it's a real war story. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my, my one friend and I, we were hiding from a helicopter and kept doing passes, and it was, keeps trying to get us, and we keep throwing rockets at it, and we're just neither hitting. It's like it was coming around for its final pass. We're like, oh, man, we're done. We're at the rockets. We're doomed. It's going to hit us. It's going to hit us. And just when it was lining up to take a shot at us, a jet came out of nowhere, and one of its own team and just kamikaze it, and they both exploded <laughs> in the air. And it was, and my friend and I were just like, "Did, or, so we're good? I think, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get out of here." And it was just those moments make me really want to play uh, Battlefront, but uh, right now, like an online game, multiplayer, baby, just not mixing. Not there, I can't yeah. save and quit. Like it's when you're playing with other people, you can't pause the action, change a diaper, um, or else it's not really. It's almost out of courtesy to the other players too. It's not fair for them to have to be down a teammate because I have responsibilities as a parent. Um, you know, maybe later on when I can get more defined pockets of time, then maybe. But right now things are still very like drop of a hat. Might need to tend to something. Uh, that playing those games online, like just talking about Battlefield now, has got me all like, oh, maybe I could get it. No, oh, I'm not bothered. Yeah, I think um, it sucks a little bit. I think they have some. It seems like they've dealt, especially that company tends to know how to deal with these things. So I do think that 
they would well survive a dropping player in that they can if you had oh. if you had if you had to the drop they'll know how to bring somebody else in and i think going in uh, this will be me like i think probably this week i'll get into it a little bit i haven't really played it i do own it like it's ready to go i, I literally have not played it except for the beta before it launched officially uh just because it's followed and you know my timing had been put within that so yeah I, I think it's probably all just towards attitude that assume like look like i might have to just drop it at any point get in pew 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 get my fun and like get out of there and if baby cries i'm out sorry guys so it, in many ways yeah. that's like it definitely precludes anything where it's joining up with a team of buddies or trying to produce anything trying to be competitive in any way because it's hard to be competitive in a big match when you don't have to drop because there's baby poop to deal with. Mm-hmm. So, but I think I think it's at a point now where you dropping is going to be too critical of situation if you do want to jump into it. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll I'll report from the field sometime ne- next week. I likely <laughs> will <laughs> give it a shot. But um, you should do so, like a podcast recording from you actually like there, like you're an embedded journalist. You're <laughs> out <laughs> right on hoth. There was a, a there was a game as so uh, there was a space sim Elite Dangerous. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Which is an amazing game. Again, something where it's a little bit much. Like, there's so much to do, and it's so, the scope is so massive. Like it'd be really hard. Like you really need to put in some decent time. I mean, you're traveling the vastness of space. Like yeah. it is not prone for like a ten minute session at all. Yeah, my so I really... space sims are, are are limited until maybe No Man's Sky. Oh, yeah. see, man, that's going to be, yeah. So what's yeah. funny for me is that, so there's No Man's Sky, and then their Elite Dangerous is releasing a new uh, expansion. And it, it's like $60 expansion, brand new game, basically. But there's planetary landings, there's moon bases, there is ships within ships. It's just, it is just, it is really a second game. It's incredible. So the battle will be, would I want to get into No Man's Sky, or would I want to expand the game I already play and I know I like, Elite Dangerous? Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting toss up, and also given like I've now dipped into a couple recent titles of which I think I'm kind of budget wise I need to really pull back on that for a bit. So I'm not sure I could even participate in either. Yeah. But so um, Elite Dangerous, what was interesting is that within the Reddit forums and within YouTube, there was a bunch of channels that had started up around like in field reporting. There was a radio station that they did online, Radio Sidewinder. You could go through and like they were just playing like a radio station and every now and then they'd have a news segment and they'd have people read the news. It's like, oh, well, in this galaxy, there's a whole in-world galaxy, politics, everything. It's like, well, in this quadrant recently, the emperor was overthrown by a coalition of this. <laughs> the, the something something base would fall over, legendary, and like players were getting in on it. Like eventually a player's bounty could be worth like hundreds of millions. So it's legendary pirate you know deathwing recently this this week was taken down by three noble bounty hunters blah 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 <laughs> so they nice. have this, so players entirely un um provoked from the game company just started to produce an entire in-world news system to report like things that were going in on the game and in game some of it was we're recruiting people to fly to the scene of space events so you, can, <laughs> so you can report like on what you see and like take footage and send it back to us like That's it's a, hilarious man it's the wildest stuff like it and like oh man to be like <laughs> man i wish you again you kind of like you wish you were like 15 and 16 again to like so you could just really throw yourself into this stuff because that's nuts like yeah real life reporting on in-game events i think like if I if I was an adolescent now, the way games are now, like that might have been a bad thing. Because <laughs> yeah. maybe I wouldn't have developed as like I might not have gotten out as much. And not developed social skills. I I would have still had those, but like just the I assure like, you I'm very charismatic. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm so I'm so so charming. Yes. <laughs> so fancy. Uh, that like, I think I just, maybe I would have missed out on some of the experiences I had with some extracurriculars if I had have gotten too involved in games. And I don't know, maybe my parents might have just been like, no, no, you're, you're getting out, you're going to do something. I don't know, because like... <laughs> it's your alternate timeline. Like, you have no baby, you're still in the basement. Yeah. Still living yeah. at home and like... <laughs> never went to school, just... No, just played Elite Dangerous. 
Almost became a pro gamer, but it fell apart. Oh. Green <laughs> gotta, crushed. That would have to be, like, the saddest. That's, like, oh. Just picturing, like, and you have, like, Tom Waits music in the background, and it's just, like, this, <laughs> this sad, lonely man who almost made it, but not quite. Like. I was wondering what could have been. Oh. <laughs> It's like the the pro esport equivalent of being like Rocky Balboa's towel boy. <laughs> You'd be a pro gaming team's mouse uh, oiler. My kid, I was like mouse oiler. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, I was. I wonder. I wonder about like that the, with uh, the, the energy drink boy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Or head <laughs> wiper. You just walk around with like a spout to like spout in energy drink yeah. into the players as they're clicking away. <laughs> Mountain Dew. I always, um, I always wonder about oh Mountain Dew. God, <laughs> <laughs> I always, uh, I wonder about that with my with my penchant for RPGs. I always wondered if I was at the right time in my life to play World of Warcraft because it feels like it would have been my jam. Like at this point now, like that whole online mobile thing is really kind of not mobile. A uh, MOBA thing is really passed over my head. No, it's not a MOBA. Sorry, um, MMO. Thank you, MMO. It's really passed over my head. Like it's really bizarre and like really minute. As far as like its actions, like it's not really fights from RPG. I've always felt. I'm sure there's versions that work that well. But anyways, the, generally the genre has passed over me, passed by me. I don't have time for that. Anyways, I do wonder. You go back to like 14 and 15 year old me, and if that thing was as advanced as it was and available, like what would have happened? Because it feels like it feels like a dark hole I could have gone down. And and it's not to say like there's plenty of folks who play it and they just live normal, reasonable lives. It's not a big deal, yeah. but. But it's like any, it's a vice. It's like any vice. And there's some, some people can handle one vice but not another. Like I, yeah, I know like some an, people. Like an addiction, right? It's an addiction. Any, a lot of these things are easily like addictive. Yeah. I know some people who, like you'll see one person who can gamble just fine, but they, they can't drink because they don't know how to control it. And then another person who can handle their liquor and not have it phase them and they can... You know, exercise moderation just fine, but they have to keep themselves like 50 kilometers away from any form of gambling. You know, it's. I think different personalities have those draws, and myself, I, I think like I, yeah, I, I could see myself getting addicted to that type of game. That's why it's like yeah, I just can't like I just avoid it because it's safest. You know, it's, yeah. it's and uh, yeah, I think if, if World of Warcraft was it when I was like fourteen, fifteen, that could have been bad news, you know, just for my what cool experiences I had then. Um, maybe they might not have happened and just been lost in a fantasy world, which don't get me wrong, is is totally valid to explore. But I don't know whether I would have been able to exercise a moderation to not let it absorb the other parts of my life that were just as important. And so in that weird parallel universe, like you and I wouldn't have met in real life, so we wouldn't be real life friends, but we would no, totally be friends. In-game friends. Same, same guild. Doing especially. raids together, guilds. Yep. Jeff would be our mortal enemy on the other side. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff would be like Horde. We'd be fighting him. <laughs> God, this no, Jeff wait, guy. You'd... <laughs> <laughs> you'd be helping everybody. What are you talking about? Oh, that's true. I'd yeah. be a healer and just uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> throw out the land. It may, maybe in this one, I'm the I'm the badass. I'm the killer. I'd be, no, uh, I'd be Leroy Jenkins. Marauder. I, I'd be the Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Leroy, Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins is charging. Yeah. Uh, you know he's awesome. a hearth, he was a Hearthstone card for a long time, like in a really in a really overpowered oh, yeah. one. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> it, it's super overpowered, and I just think I think they they nerfed him actually because he was like too good. Oh. But I think they I think he did the call out and everything on the when he's played on the board. Like, oh. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Man, they get rid of him or they nerf him. I think they just nerfed him. Man, Hearthstone, which I haven't touched, for instance, now in like oh. a better part of a month. Like, I said it, though. Gavin, are you getting that static? Or is that just yeah, me? I am. It was me just communicating with others. All right. I'll give that a shot again. Uh, no, just saying that you went a couple episodes without the Hearthstone mention. Yeah, and this was only like a, hey guys, have you noticed how I haven't said Hearthstone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty impressive that you just kind of like, yeah, I'm done with you. See you later. 
Yeah, just like it, it got to, it kind of came to a conclusion to me. It's like you got to a point. It's just like this is. I've got. I got to a place where it's unless you pour in a whole lot more, you're not going to advance very much. And even advancement for me was at that point was it's not a narrative. And congratulations on finishing that book is more just I'm going to be. I could maybe get le to level rank one and neat. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like I'll, I'll right. like on my avatar here, I'll just have a number one because like I'm super proud of. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I might go back and play it at some point. It's still interesting, but compared to this other stuff, especially like Fallout, and it very naturally just fell off, which is curious. Yeah, the, um, yeah I just think that's a uh, that is a good point to chop it off. The yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think about where. <laughs> Chopped Sorry. off the conversation. Yeah, then, then I dropped Dude. off appropriately. I was thinking, yeah. th I was very unsubtly thinking about whether the three of us have discussed bringing in new dad tips, like ending off the show just from one of us, from like one of our real live ones. But given that we have not discussed it beforehand, I'm not sure if you guys would like to, someone would like to ad lib it real quickly and toss it in. I have one I could toss. I don't know if you, either of you would like to do we'll it. Toss it. Toss it. Yeah, if you already got one. Go okay. toss it. Nice. Wait so, for us, him and Han. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So generally speaking, each week we're going to try to end with a tip from a new father, uh, either hopefully gaming related, more likely not just like survival mode as far as <laughs> we're all in this together trying to get through this. Um, we're going to try to avoid the, J the general basic tips that you see on any blogs or post to Facebook. Although ultimately if, if there's one that's really helped us, we will absolutely mention it. Um, any tips that you guys have for us, please do send it to us through our website. So for myself, it was setting up, uh, ensuring that I have ample access to streaming content, like throughout my house, or wherever we're going to be. Cause there's just a lot of downtime, downtime, time where it's still like the baby's going to be sleeping for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or I'm trying to bounce him to sleep. And that's like going to be a 20 minute process. I'm playing with him on the store, the floor, or he's fussing or going somewhere, somewhere else like that. There's like this 30, there's going to be like this hour of what you would ultimately call kind of just boring time. What, what I found to keep my sanity has been incredibly helpful for me was before the baby came along, we installed a smart TV in my kitchen, like uh, close to the kitchen. So that thing now can play YouTube clips, it can play uh, Netflix, it can play a bunch of those other bits of content, and even just like television shows. So it's been really instrumental in keeping our sanity for some of those longer nights or for some of those rough patches where we just have to try to desperately bounce him to sleep for 40 minutes. Like being able to toss on a YouTube clip just to help me kind of not notice the time as he's going down. Like it's really been wonderful. So there's, because there's that one, there is the... I mean, I have my computer downstairs, I have the TV downstairs, but in setting up that in advance, like it's really been, like it's really paid dividends to both of us. And too, like we, we would just be sitting around the kitchen playing with them, which I think kitchen slash living room, which ends up being kind of our main family area. As we're sitting here talking, my wife and I were able to throw up clips onto the television for, you know, breastfeeding tips, uh, bathing tips, like uh, recipes for the kid, which then also kind of streams into the kitchen. So... You know, with, with, given the general isolation that kind of comes in being new parents, especially kind of as a new dad, I think providing yourself with that window to the rest of the world as well as information is very beneficial. So if you have places in your house where you're able to install that stuff, um, I would recommend it. It's really been helpful for us. Yeah, that's a good point. I could see the same thing. I can't live without Netflix right now. So <laughs> Chase is I, on I, the case. I totally, yeah, I totally second that. Yeah. Yeah. So, have, 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 have either of you guys tried um, Show Me as opposed to Netflix? No, because they no. don't have a PS4 app or a Windows app. They used to not offer it, right? It was only was it Bell or Rogers customers? Rogers. This oh, is Kojiko, I, think, so. I think you guys are thinking. Are you thinking of Crave or are you no, thinking of Show Me? Show Me's no. Rogers. Yeah, no, I think they just released it to everybody now. Oh, okay. Yeah, because like, they have an Xbox Crave app. Crave hasn't yet, and both oh, Crave okay. and Show Me only have Xbox apps. And uh, right now, Show Me is available for all viewers, but Crave is not going to be available till I believe, March. Um, and then they'll release it to non-Bell uh, subscribers as well. The one problem I find with 
Show Me and like the reviews I've seen for both Show Me and Crave is that their architecture in regards to the streaming capabilities um, are not as sound. They haven't really mm -hmm. figured out the bugs in regards to having it be a valid way to stream and then also having delivery systems like being able to have apps for PlayStation or being able to have uh, basically it's non-browser based stuff. So like if you want it on your TV yeah. and not your cable box um, assuming you don't have a cable box kind of thing. Like it's just not as available as it should be to compete with like Netflix, which has an app for everything from Windows to Xbox to PlayStation. And then there's even just the in browser option as well. Netflix even has options to install apps on uh, smart TVs, on uh, various Blu-ray players that have Wi-Fi or even just network cable. Um, they've got a better base of delivery systems and Unfortunately, the other two streaming services just don't have that yet. I'm not saying that they won't, but it's something that should definitely address sooner than later, especially for a broader audience. And you can't watch Narcos, which is amazing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Narcos is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, gentlemen, unless anything uh, comes to mind, I think we'll uh, call that hashtag dad tips and our new dad tips, and <laughs> we'll move on our way. Uh, anything else from you, gents? Not really, no. Wonderful. <laughs> Everyone, this... <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Everyone, this has been New Dad Gaming. Thank you so much for listening in. We do this weekly. If you have any show ideas, comments, suggestions, New Dad Tips, which is our hot new segment we just introduced this week, <laughs> anything else we'd love to hear from you, please visit our website at newdadgaming.com. Like, subscribe, and share as much as you can. We will see you next week. And as always, I'm Trevor, and I have a five-month-old. I'm Gavin. I have a three-month-old. I'm Jeff. I have a two-and-a-half and a, and a five-year-old. And a Christmas tree. And a Christmas tree. And a Christmas tree. And possibly <laughs> next week a talking couch. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, please. For that, folks, you'll want to tune into the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have a great week, guys. Bye. See ya.